Ah, uh, so I decided to be like one of those clout chasing TikTokers. I bought Anchor. This is the Anchor Motion X500, the old space audio, spatial audio, whatever the fuck it's called, bullshit. <laughs> yep, I gave in, I bought it. Now, the reason why I want to do a review on this so bad is because I've seen a lot of YouTubers reviewing this thing, and a lot of them being audiophiles. Guess what? They don't know jack shit about what's going on in the speaker. Spatial audio, you're not getting anything extra. You know what? T to educate y'all motherfuckers on the internet, maybe you don't know much about audio or anything. Hey, it's all great. I'm going to give you an in-depth overview of this thing. Like, in-depth, literally. I'm taking it apart. I'm going to give you an overview of everything, what kind of processor they're using, what kind of algorithms, possibly, and all that stuff. So let's start from just talking about what exactly is spatial audio. So, hey, guys... Make it, I'm making it very clear at the beginning. You're not getting anything extra. It's still a stereo signal. It's just mixed in a way to make you feel like the speaker is bigger. It has a bigger, bigger sound stage. It sounds like a 3D surround thing. No, no, no. It's still stereo. You're not getting anything extra. If not, you're actually losing something. All right. Let me get to how they do this. So what they're doing is with two, two and a half inch, or I think they're two and a quarter inch. They're actually small. Uh, it's drivers in the front and one driver on the top that's one and a half inch. Uh, this small driver on top is down mixed to a mono signal. And then they add some sort of uh, phase shift to the front drivers to make it feel as if you're listening to a bigger speaker, has a bigger sound stage. You know, it's kind of a psychoacoustics thing. Go check out Analog Devices, uh, Sigma Studios Logs. There's a pretty well-rounded documentation over there. And yeah, this is using an analog devices chip, by the way. I'll take it apart and I'll show you. Um, I'll put the link down in the description about the whole analog devices thing. Uh, well, yeah, this is a down-mixed mono signal. And with some phase shift added to it at certain frequencies, it tricks you to feel as if the speaker is bigger. Same with the, the front drivers as well. They probably do a similar kind of a phase shifting to it. They might even add reverb or some delay between the, the top and the front drivers. So yeah, you're losing something actually. You're not gaining anything uh, from having that extra spatial audio driver on top. Maybe just a little bit of a loudness, but I don't know, I mean, it's just stereo signal. You're not gonna get anything extra. See, it sounds good. It doesn't sound too bad, the speaker itself, but what I can't stand is the audio files be t talking like, oh shit, this thing, you're getting so much more than your average Bluetooth speaker. No, you're not. And holy shit, guys, you're audiophiles. You're supposed to know that. See, maybe they do, but they just act stupid because they're paid to act stupid. And they're willing They're willing to do that. So, you know, I'm not paid. I'm not going to act stupid. Yeah, I call spatial audio bullshit. It doesn't help with the sound quality at all. Now, let's pop this open. I'm going to take the grill off before I get into the entire thing. I'm going to take the grill off and I'll show you. You probably recognize this speaker. Oh, shit, this is that speaker, the Hua Chang bot. <laughs> that fucking, I don't know what kind of face is that, that emoji speaker, you know, you've seen it on the Raymate M8 review. <laughs> yeah, that's the Anchor Soundcore Motion X500. That's a long ass name. Anyways, let's get into the sound check. I'll compare it against the uh, Soho. Now, it's got a pretty decent equalizer app. But uh, I'm not going to be using any of that, just like the majority of y'all who buys these speaker. Um, we're going to compare it against the Solo with its original EQ modes. But uh, before we actually get to that, I want to show you the difference between the three EQ modes this thing has. Let's start. I don't know, my phone stopped recording for a minute. Oh, shit. See, I fucking hate technology. Sometimes they just suck. Dumbass programmers don't know how to do proper programs. And they bug you. Anyways, um... There's three EQ modes, I want to show you all of them. Uh, we got green mode, blue mode, and red mode. That's just what I'm going to call it. I don't even want to bother looking into oh, spatial audio, this spatial audio, that. And I'm just going to see which one sounds the best and which one sucks. That's all. Um, let's start from the green mode. Volume at 50%, by the way.
all right, that's the uh, demonstration of all three modes. Well, <laughs> I like the red mode the most, so it apparently turns off the spatial audio. Ha, <laughs> well, no surprise there, eh? Um, all three modes are very boomy, uh, very bass heavy speaker. It's a very warm sounding thing. So like, if you don't like bass, you, this is definitely not the thing for you. You'll see how boomy it is, especially when compared to the solos. Uh, yeah, this thing is very boomy. Well, uh, we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna do a comparison at also 50% volume, then we're gonna go all the way up to max. So let's get to it. You know, I really had enough of these dumbass texts. Like, all right, it took me a good 10 minutes just to get these solos paired to my uh, tablet to do this test. Uh, you know, with, it, with, with the cheap Chinese crap they are out there today, and the marketing bullshit they put with it, just like the spatial audio crap, I really had it enough. This is why I'm always so grumpy doing these reviews, because they always piss me off. These are so stupid. The only time I could get joy out of them is by taking them apart and playing bassy music through a gangster rap and shit. But yeah, guys, face the facts, man. These are all cheap Chinese crap. Even if they're Huashan Bay Kings, eh, they're, they're still Chinese. It doesn't change the fact that they're cheaply made. They're made out of crappy parts. Even the JBLs are, so, you know, just, just so you know, man. Um, we're starting with the uh, sound core. Then we're going to move on to the solo at 50%. Let's uh, get back to the anchor. We're going to crank it all the way up to the maximum volume.
uh, it's pretty obvious. Uh, the solo is a lot louder. Um, the anchor isn't that far behind, to be honest, but like, there's no bass when it's cranked all the way up. I don't know if you'd be able to hear, but there's no bass. It's reasonable. The anchor has uh, smaller drivers, and they don't have tweeters. So the overall clarity is also as good as the solo, and honestly, with the price of the anchor, you get two solos. So and honestly, that's the route I would go. But still, the anchor is not that bad of a speaker. It's just not, like the clout-chasing TikTokers say, the best in the world. Check it out. It really looks like that emoji. Anyways, gangster rap time, guys. Gangster rap time. Alright, let's do a teardown. Alright, well, here's the back of the speaker. Uh, it's just one passive radiator, a pretty long passive radiator with a small circuit board that acts as a USB in for charging and programming. So yes, you technically could program this with that USB port. All right, front side of the speaker. Um, this looks to be made by East Tech. Um, you can see this is the battery pack. I am going to guess it's a 418650 battery pack. We'll take that off and uh, have a look at that. And these are the speaker drivers in there and there's a spatial audio driver on top. And this is the amplifier board. So this chip, I don't know, we'll look that up, but I, as you can see, our main audio processor is this one, ADAU1452, it's an analog devices chip. And um, I'll include the wiki for Sigma Studio that's used to program this chip uh, down there in the uh, description. And you'll see just exactly what the spatial audio is all about. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much just stereo mixed into a, uh, I don't know, um, kind of a, a special mix where it makes you feel like you're listening to a big speaker. But no, it's still stereo. Keep that in mind. And um, we got some other circuit boards. So let's look these two up. I'm going to talk a little bit about these because, yeah. All right. This AIP650 is an LED driver. Oh, wow, that flickering. Uh, there we go. It's the LED driver. It says, eh, it doesn't say anything here, but oh yeah, there you go. A Nixie tube driver, LED driver, LED display drivers. As for the uh, PCM1690 is a DAC. That probably goes from the analog devices pro uh, processor into the uh, amplifier. That's what's in between, because I think you do need a DAC for that analog process, uh, AD processor. Uh, that's... I think it was the case for my uh, Watch on Bay Nader board as well. So yeah, there you have it. You see that? DSP, PCM1690, and then your TPH uh, amplifier chips, which is probably this one down there. Bluetooth is just an actions chip, which is why I didn't remove that sticker. It's pretty clear. I don't know if y'all see this, but Anchor really upped their game on this one. The build quality is really nice. Uh, very good, nice printed circuit board. Something that you'd find in you know the quality of, like, say, a JBL speaker or something like that. Um, very nice. Everything is done with a connector. Even the uh, antenna for Bluetooth is connected with this kind of a coaxial connector instead of just your soldered uh, crap like a lot of walk on bass speakers out there. Everything could be removed, screwed in, and there's barely any glue in the speaker. Contrary to the Soundcore Motion 100, which I would do a review. It's a pain in the ass to take apart. Yep. Ooh, now the amplifier, they're actually two of the same chips. TPA3128, uh, 30 watt per channel amplifier chips. So yeah, each of these drivers are getting 30 watts. That's actually a lot. And the uh, spatial driver too. But I think there's the DSP to limit it for the spatial driver and it's in bridge mono mode. So I think they limited it to, and uh, you know, I'd say it probably couldn't take much more than 10 watts. But still, wow, very, very nice quality components. You can see the buck converter here and everything. That's, I don't know if that's a buck or a booth. I, see, I'm not a good electrical engineer. Um, it's just 
some sort of a converter to probably uh, boost the voltage for the amplifiers. Yep, and here's some of the connectors that is going to the LED, the LED ring on top of the unit. Here's uh, some of them going to the uh, button, the controls. Um, I'm going to get the battery out and see what's in there, what's that about. Battery is indeed a four cell, but it's uh, two in series two, and two sets of two batteries in parallel. So 7.3 volts um, and uh, about 4,900 milliamp hours. Um, pretty typical Chinese battery pack. Nothing too terrible. Just what you expect from these kind of speakers. But just look at the thing. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six screws holding it together onto the uh, front of the, the unit. And then two more screws holding two of the plates together. They could have omitted these two screws, but they didn't. That's a sign for very, very good quality. And look at that passive radiator and how many screws is on there. Wow. That is top-notch quality. Yeah, I'm kind of seeing the reason why these are so expensive. It's overbuilt and over-engineered um, to the point. I, I don't see this as necessary. This is over-engineered, guys. But still, um, it's very expensive. There's a reason for that. At least they're not trying to scam us. But still, I still think they could have, you know, they don't need that many screws to hold this thing in. They could have just used something to press it in uh, together front and the back. And uh, yeah, I don't really see the need for that many screws. This is cast metal anyways. So it's not going to bend. Still, well, uh, there's a reason why these are overpriced. They're not necessarily that bad actually it, it, it's worth the price but i just don't see the need to build it like this if you know what i mean but anyways hey shout out to anchor it's really awesome all right here you go speaker unit oh look at that cone this is definitely an e-stack unit uh this cone is seen in multiple other bluetooth speakers they're seeing the sony's uh, i think they're also seen in harman's i'm not really sure i mean whoever east techs make this stuff for you see these kind of cone and this is their full cones for full range drivers. It's it's actually pretty decent. Oh, yeah, you see these in a lot of TV speakers that Eastec made. And um, yeah, shout out to this. This is obviously a quality driver. I'm gonna do a sound test on this thing. Let's go. I wasn't able to get into the spatial audio driver. The entire thing was like glued shut. So I don't want to risk uh, breaking the seal because it's going to make air leaks and all. Still, um, yeah, it's just a generic one and a half inch driver. And like these woofers are really decent. Wow, I'm very surprised by the build quality of this thing. It's very, very good. Um, yeah, there you have it. Well, okay, verdict time. Is this a good speaker to get? I guess so. I mean, I got it for $100 buying used uh, in like new condition from Amazon, if you get it for about, I'd say a good 100, 100 or so, maybe 110, at least less than 120, I'd say this is a pretty decent bargain. Anything more than that, though, I honestly don't think it's worth it. Um, it, it, it doesn't really get that loud, and even at maximum volume, it kind of compresses a lot. So, I mean, I guess it's up to you. In terms of sound quality, it's uh, default tuning, it just... You know, it loses to twin solos. But um, if you know how to do the EQ, it should technically sound better than the solos. So um, I guess it's up to you guys if this is a thing for you or not. If you know how to do EQs and if you're willing to spend your time on, on uh, trying to tune, tune it to the way you like. Otherwise, uh, yeah, there you have it, guys. Um, not a cheap watch on base speaker at all. Decently built. Um, what I expected from Anchor, at least the build quality criteria, they met that uh, um, standard. But is this the best speaker in the world, like the Cloud Chasers say? Uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> well, yep.